What is up guys? Hi. I'm Dustin. And I'm Tanya. And we are back with Claws in Effect. Episode number three. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Always seal a cheers with a kiss. Absolutely. Freaking looking good today. Yeah. What else is looking good? I mean this picture is looking good. Tell me about this picture. I don't really want to talk about this picture. Alright then, let's get into today's episode then. All right, so today, what we have for you, we're just gonna dive right in. Today we wanna to talk about <coughs> goal setting. This is actually something that someone reached out to us and said that they wanted us to touch on. So if there are topics that you would like us to cover, please let us know. That way we can come up with some things and, and uh, continue to produce some good content for you. Yeah, for sure, and this is actually a really good one. I was, actually, it took me back, because I asked on Instagram and one of our followers was like, what do you guys do for goal setting? And I was like, damn, that's a really freaking good one because we do set goals mm -hmm. and our goals have changed and they continue to change. And so we're excited about it. So let's dive right into it. Let's dive right in. So um, there's several things that we talk about or talk about or touch on when we talk about goal setting. So Dustin and I not only set goals for ourselves, but we set goals financially. We set goals with our relationship. We set goals with um, physically, physically, our bodies, but yeah, even individually, and then you know also together. And so the cool thing is, is we set these goals usually by ourselves, mm -hmm. and then we come together and we go through like, okay, what do you have? What do you have? Okay, I kind of like that. I don't really like that. And then we mesh our goals so that together we can hold each other accountable. Together we can help each other reach our goals mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily that we're setting goals for next week or five years from now ten years from now like it's a wide range of what our short-term goals are what our long term long-term goals in each different category so let's just talk about our personal goals first of all yeah so for me like especially obviously we've been through the whole treatment thing and, and, and all that but like personal growth to me is humongous we pay like $1,200 a month in coaching and people that help us in content creation, um, reusing some of our old content and, and moving our businesses forward as well as moving ourselves forward. And so it is a goal of ours to spend money, to invest in us. It is very important for us to invest in coaches, mentors, helpers with us working a nine to five job we can't just focus on content and between the two of us we literally have almost 400 youtube videos we have over 2200 instagram and facebook posts on top of blog posts on top of websites on top of so what happens behind the scenes is a lot and so we have to have a goals but B, we have an entire team that puts us together. And I know I just made a funny video on Instagram about the getting ready to film and Jim and James and John and the whole thing. Like we literally have three cameras going right now and they're all up on the table by themselves. You know, nobody's helping us. We don't have a film crew. We don't have none of that. We're just getting started. Like we're really trying to bust into the influential game, into the couples game, into the nutrition and fitness game. We're just really trying to help people change their lives and spread love. So personally, our goals are humongous yeah. and it takes a freaking team to get to where we're headed. Because we're headed for the moon and I'm not stopping at anything short of that. So for me personally, um, I have big goals, she has big goals, um, and our goals collide. Yeah, they're, they're pretty entwined with each other. Like, our goals are pretty similar, which is pretty awesome, um, because that helps us help each other to push and strive towards reaching those goals. So, but I mean, just because we have goals that pretty much mesh and intertwine together, we still have goals of our own that are completely separate um, from the other person. Yeah, for sure. And even even like back to social media and things like that, like I obviously talk about addiction, I talk about fitness, I talk about what my beliefs are, what I'm feeling. I do minutes in the morning. Mm -hmm. I do like I, I put out a lot of content on social media where you talk about endometriosis and 
some self of love and some of the things that I've struggled with with um, the things that have resulted from having a hysterectomy because of my endometriosis and um, other things from our past. Yeah, so our personal goals are growth. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to explain it. With coaching and help and, and, and moving forward, not only for us personally, but to help other people do the same thing that we're doing. Because right. I remember what 2012 was like, which is what exactly. we'll call the year that we melted our whole fucking lives down. But I remember that, mm -hmm. and I don't ever want to go back there. Right. So every day I'm clawing and fighting and biting to never experience that again. And I think it just comes down to, when you think about personal goals, you have to really just think about what exactly is it that you want for yourself for your personal growth, mentally, physically, all of those things. And I know that kind of all ties into what we're gonna to touch on, but it all just comes down to what is it that you want and then setting those goals for yourself. Yeah, so the next thing obviously is fitness goals. Yes. And 2012, my fitness goals was to quit smoking and stop drinking pop. Mm -hmm. Today, it's entirely different. I wanna be 215 pounds with a six pack, I'm at uh, almost 211, and I, I'm, I'm not as lean as I could be, so I'm, I'm getting towards my goal. I obviously need to put on some more weight, but I also need to stay as lean as possible, where five years ago, I think, is when I was training to wrestle in the Corners so. for State games. Yeah. So I've went from, you know, kind of a holy 260, three packs of cigarettes, 12 pops a day, to I'm shooting for 215 with a six pack, but there was a ton of goals in between there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we did some power lifting, we did some, we did some athletic training, we did this, we did that, you did some running, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, that's all part of it. Right. And, and, and that's the thing is evolution for me as an individual, evolution as us as a couple, but evolution as our goals as well. Mm -hmm. Cause my fitness goals literally change all the freaking time. Yeah, and I mean, that's the thing is, like we set goals, usually what we do is at the beginning of the year, we set goals, and then throughout the year, those goals might change. They might um, stay the same, some of them, but you grow and evolve as a person every single day. So the goals that you set for yourself are not always gonna be legitimately the same. Um, things can possibly change throughout as you continue to experience exactly what it is that you want. Yeah, because figuring out what you want is actually the main goal. At the end of the day, most people don't even know what they want, and that's the God's honest truth. Yeah. So you can set all these goals, and then you start working towards them, and then it's like, you know what? I don't even want to play the harmonica. <laughs> I don't either. What? <laughs> Where did that even come from? Like, I don't know. even have a harmonica. <laughs> but like at the beginning, it was like, oh, I want to play an instrument, and I want to read 11 books, and I want to skateboard, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. But at the end of the day, you may figure out as you go and as you realize what you do like and what you don't like that your goals will change. Well, like I remember, like we're talking about fitness goals. So I remember, like I had this magic number in my head that I wanted to be 130 pounds. The, ha the heaviest I was was 175 pounds. And I was like, man, I just, I wanna be 130 pounds. Like I would lie on my driver's license and put, no, I'm 135 pounds. But for some reason, the number would just stick with me. It was like, I wanna be that weight. But last year when I did 75 hard, I had a real specific goal to get down to a certain body fat percentage, which was 18%. And I exceeded that goal. But what was my weight when I was done? I was at 142 pounds and I felt amazing. So it was like, I don't need to get down to that 130 pounds that I had set for myself because I feel really good at where I'm at, 142 pounds, and that's where I want to stay. Granted, I'm not right there right now, but I'm working on it. Yeah, and 130 would look horrible on you. Real talk. Would, yeah, You'd be sure. really, really skinny. Because 142 was... Lean. Very lean. Yeah. I was at 13% yeah. body fat at 142. I think you could get a little leaner. For sure. To, like, you know, do the whole stage thing or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But it's, like, 130 would look really bad on you. Uh -huh. Just like when I hit 199 in 2015, was, yeah. like, I looked horrible. He was very The following skinny. year, I was, like, 240. Yeah. And I was thick and <laughs> heavy and breathed heavy. Right. Um, so but, yeah. Show that, like, even though you have a certain goal set for yourself, it can always change. Yeah, the next thing we have wrote down is our financial goals, and that's a huge thing for us. Obviously, neither one of us, like, we left in our school bus on January 2nd with no jobs, and we literally set a goal that we wanted to make ten thousand dollars a month each month by the end of the year. 
So that doesn't mean we're going to make 120 grand this year. That means by December, we want to be making $10,000 a month. Uh, I know we're extremely freaking close right now, just in several different, we're doing this and we're doing that and we're doing this and we're doing that. And it's all adding up to almost our goal. Exactly. But eight years ago, we were in debt up to our eyeballs. Owed on everything. Yeah. And mm -hmm. our goal then was to cut down our debt. And so we started literally by paying a huge chunk down on one thing and then literally working overtime and busting our ass and budgeting and doing the whole thing and paying all the way down on one car. And then once that was paid for, we took that payment and stacked it on top of another one and then another one. So if we got a huge snowball effect. Yeah, any bonuses or any savings that we could make, we literally had no money in the bank and it just all went towards every freaking bill we had. Pay the minimum on everything else and pay the maximum on one and, and wipe it out. And we literally wiped out like $35,000 in debt in like 12 months. But I mean, tax returns, every last cent that we had, we were throwing at something. So we had, you know, four or five years of complete partying, doing whatever we wanted, no rules, no budget, no nothing. And then it was pump the brakes, lock down, stay home, watch Netflix instead of go to the movie theater, <laughs> play putt-putt golf in yeah. your garage. I like, remember paying off my student loan. That yeah, lump sum. I wrote a freaking that check was, for almost $18,000. That was <gasps> like such a relief, mm -hmm. such a relief. Mm -hmm. But it all just comes down to setting those goals. Setting them goals. The last goal was obviously our relationship goals. Yep. And those have changed extremely well. <laughs> they have. You and know? I think that's important is that even though you have goals for everything else, you do have to have a goal set for your relationship. Things that you want to achieve with your relationship, whether it's better communication with your partner, um, date nights. And it's not even just me and her. It's my people too. The yeah. people in my circle, the people that aren't in my circle that I want in my circle. Mm -hmm. I literally send three video messages a day mm -hmm. to people, letting them know that I appreciate them, mm -hmm. letting them know that I love them, or letting them know that I think they're a piece of shit. Don't think I'm lying. I will send somebody, yo, like you yeah. want to be in my space. I don't want you in my space. Back up. Right? And that's the truth. Like, I have boundaries. I have to keep me going forward. And sometimes that's the removal of other people. I had to remove somebody earlier this year. It was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I did a bunch of help for this dude. It just wasn't beneficial for me anymore. And I wasn't rude. I was literally like, yo, me and you need to separate. So we separated. And that is a relationship goal. In order for me to move forward, sometimes you have to cut some of the slack. Yep. Somebody is always waiting for the next feeding and I was tired of feeding. So with that, those are the four things that we really focus on as far as, excuse me, goal wise. Yeah. And, um, so like you said, obviously your goals change over the years. Like you're going to have certain goals. And then once, you know, the years pass by, things are going to change for you because like I said, you're constantly changing, you're constantly evolving. Or but, even like you get injured. Yes. Well, you know, like, like we I, have some clients who've gotten injured and it sure. might, you know, kind of set back some of their goals. But, but there's other things then that we focus on. If, you know, if you're injured, we can dial in the nutrition even more so that you're still losing weight. Things like that. Or you take a big hit. Nobody's ready for a $6,000 car breakdown. Or you total your car and nobody's ready for worst case scenario someone passes away or you go through a divorce or something like no one's ready for that stuff so your goals will change obstacles will get in the way and just about the second that you think you're ready for everything and a bomb goes off and you weren't ready at all and, and, and that's the beauty of life is you get to pick back up move forward figure it out solve the problem keep going right and the reason why we set goals is because we used to be people who did not we did not set goals we didn't make plans we just kind of flew by the seat of our pants and was like, meh, whatever. Not setting goals for yourself sets you up for failure. Sets you up for not reaching the dreams that you've set for yourself. Everybody dreams, right? And they always say dream big. But if you don't set goals to reach those dreams, you're going to fail continuously because you don't have a solid plan as to how you're going to get there. With that, at 32 years old, I looked at my wife and I said, baby, by the time I turn 35, we're going to do something freaking epic. Boy, do we and I had no clue what that was going to look like, but I knew that I had something to work towards. On January 2nd of this year, 10 days after I turned 35, my wife and I left in a school bus with no jobs, 
doing whatever the freak we wanted to do, traveling plan. the country, no plans, but it was epic as hell. Mm -hmm. We we did it. We, we, we did. did something epic that most people don't have the balls to do and will never do. And that was cool. But with that, everybody sets New Year's goals, yes. right? I want to lose weight. I want to have more money. I want to do this. I want to do that. And so on New Year's Day, everybody says, I'm going to run 10 miles, I'm going to eat lettuce, and I'm going to spend $1 this year. And by January 15th, everybody's <laughs> fucking starving, they're exhausted, they've spent $5,000, and their relationship is miserable. Yep. So they quit, yep. and they quit everything. Mm -hmm. And that's the solving problem situation where we have to come up with them plans, we have to come up with them goals, and we have to figure out how we can lose the weight, save the money, build the relationship, get to where we're headed. For sure. And like like I said, like you can set big goals for yourself, right? Like I want to lose 15 pounds. I want to run 10 miles. I want to save $5,000. But you have to think about the way of how you're going to get there. Because if you're looking at the big picture all the time, you're going to get so disappointed because you're not reaching that big picture fast enough, right? So how do we fix it? How do we fix setting those goals and reaching those that we've set for ourselves? For me personally, I literally on my 31st birthday, 35th birthday, looked at you and said, I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 40. Yes, you did. Right? Yes. I'm just saying it here. I've said it on Instagram. I've said it on Facebook. I've said it on YouTube. I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 40. How? I'm unsure. But every day, I am working towards making more money, building the lifestyle that I desire, and doing it with my partner. So what does that look like? Starting videos like this, working harder on our nutrition, starting the Kings and Queens Fortress where we're helping couples literally live the life that we have built. It's these types of things on top of having side jobs and doing this and doing that that is helping us get to our goal. So, do I know what 40 looks like? Absolutely not. I don't know what the end of this year looks like because at the beginning of this year, I lived in a school bus <laughs> down by the river, if that makes sense. So today, I don't have any idea, but I know that every day I wake up, that is on my mind. And I know that I gotta get my feet on the ground and I better be running because I have work to do to be a millionaire by the time I'm 40. Yeah, so basically, I guess what we're saying is that the solution or the fix to this, to setting your goals and reaching them, is start small. Make small adjustments every single day, working towards your goal, however that may look, even if it's just like, if it's with your nutrition, if it's trying to make one small change with adding a healthy meal in every single day. Start or with breakfast. Start with breakfast. Or it's, I'm gonna go for a walk every single day. Maybe I'm gonna try 20 minutes here and whatever. If it's money, maybe it's, I'm going to start saving back $10 from every single check that I get back. Or however it may be, but start small, because once you have those small changes that you're making, they begin to be habits, and then you start to make a routine with it, and then it just continues to grow and build, and next thing you know, you're reaching your big goal. Yeah, and, and a lot of that too is literally the small changes. So when I first started with nutrition, for instance, it was, I went from 12 pops to six, six pops to three, three pops to one, one pop to every other day, to I don't drink pop anymore, soda, whatever you guys call it. The next thing was cigarettes. I literally switched from cigarettes to chewing tobacco. Not that one was better than the other, but it was getting rid of one and using the other. I felt like chewing tobacco was better than cigarette smoking at the time, mm -hmm. so I just went all in. Like I literally threw cigarettes away, went and bought chew and ran with it. So for the next five years, I chewed two, three cans a day. In 2018, I quit nicotine altogether. Mm -hmm. But it took these small changes, these small adjustments in our finances. It was literally pay extra on this one, pay the exact amount on these, and, and, and do that, do this. Um, with our relationship, it was literally buy flowers, start dating, write a note on the mirror saying, I love you, writing a note in my cooler before I went to work for the railroad. Like it was them little ass things that was like, damn, they do appreciate me. They do love me and we can move forward together. Yeah, and sure. what you get out of that is the goals become 
reality. So we get the six pack at 215 pounds. It might take longer than you expected, but we continue to work towards it. We get financial stability. We get the job that we want to create or the life that we want to live. We get the relationship, you know what I mean? That is hashtag couple goals or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to lie about none of it. Like this is now reality. 10 years ago, we would have been like, shit, yeah, we got the best relationship. <laughs> we're freaking great and we're whatever, All whatever. good with the world. As I'm taking handfuls of pills and smoking cigarettes, like <laughs> it's easy to do. And, and a lot of people lie about this shit. But at yeah. the end of the day, my goals align with who I am and where I'm headed. And that's, that's it. Yeah. That's how you make it work. Yeah. And like you said, every day you wake up with that in your mind. What choices am I making today to help me reach that goal? Small changes, saves lives. With that, that is episode three, Cause and Effect. Mm -hmm.